Hello, I'm Christina Hendricks, and in this short video, I'll be talking about a version of the trolley problem that Judith Jarvis Thompson calls Fat Man in her article from 1985 called The Trolley Problem. Thompson introduces this version of the problem while arguing for how we can differentiate between the cases she calls bystander at the switch and transplant, as discussed in an earlier video in this series. Here's the situation. A bystander sees a runaway trolley hurtling down a track. He sees the driver attempt to put on the brakes, the brakes fail, and the driver faints. In Thompson's bystander at the switch example, the bystander can move a lever and switch the trolley onto a sidetrack that will lead to the death of one person instead of five. Here there are no sidetracks, but the bystander is on a bridge with a very large person in front of him. The question is, is it morally permissible for the bystander to push the large person onto the tracks, thereby causing the trolley to kill one person, instead of letting it go ahead on its path and killing five. Note that this situation is similar in many respects to bystander at the switch. In both cases, the bystander does something to cause the death of one person, but thereby avoids the death of five others. Several polls have shown that many people think, though, that pushing the man onto the tracks is not permissible. The first two results on the left are from polls in 2006, and the one on the right reflects what I saw when I engaged in an interactive case study on philosophyexperiments.com. They said that of those who had also done the case study, 61% said that it's not permissible to push the large person onto the track. Note, though, that the yes answer may be higher here because people may do the interactive case study more than once to see what happens if they answer differently. Remember from an earlier video in this series how many people said they thought the bystander may flip the switch? Many people said that it was morally permissible, while saying that pushing the large person onto the tracks is not. Thompson also stipulates in her article that pushing the large man onto the tracks is not morally permissible, whereas it would be morally permissible for a bystander to flip a switch to move the trolley onto a track where it will kill one person. But what is the difference between pulling a lever to switch a track, thus leading to the death of one person but avoiding the death of five, and pushing someone onto the tracks, thus leading to the death of one person but avoiding the death of five? Might it be that in the bystander at the switch case, the bystander less directly kills the one person in that they are just pulling a switch, whereas in the large person case, the bystander seems to be more directly killing the person? But why should it make a moral difference if one pulls a lever versus pushing a person? Psychologically, it certainly does make a difference for many people if they are directly touching the person or pulling a lever from further away. But should this make a moral difference when the bystander is the one responsible for the death of the one person in either case? In her 1985 article called The Trolley Problem, Judith Jarvis Thompson explains the difference between the bystander pulling a lever to switch the trolley's tracks and pushing a large person onto the tracks by reference to rights. Thompson argues that the action of pulling a lever and the action of pushing a person are importantly different in that one violates someone's rights and the other doesn't. It's important to note here that she's talking about the actual actions of pulling a lever or pushing someone. It's true that in either case one is killing a person, and we might want to say that doing so through any action in this situation is a violation of their right to life. In her 1985 article, Thompson says it may be possible to argue that either way of killing one person in the trolley problem violates their right to life, but that in the case of pulling the lever, this is morally acceptable, but not in the case of pushing someone off a bridge. The difference is in the kind of action one actually performs. As Thompson puts it, shoving a person is infringing a right of his. So also is toppling a person off a footbridge. And this is the case, she notes, even if doing so doesn't result in any injury or death for the person shoved. Just pushing them off a footbridge in itself violates a right of theirs. Now, she doesn't go into why this is the case in her article, and it's of course disputable, but it is plausible, I think, to say that one has a right that someone else not intentionally push one off a bridge, though of course this can be overridden in cases where doing so is necessary to save one's life. And it's also plausible to say, as Thompson does, that pulling a lever to make a trolley switch tracks is not itself an infringement of the right of anybody. The bystander could pull the lever, turn the trolley, and there be no one on the other track, the action of pulling the lever and turning the trolley by itself doesn't infringe a right. So pushing a person violates a right, but pulling a lever does not, and that's why pushing the large person onto the track is not morally permissible, according to Thompson. That is how, in her 1985 article, Thompson differentiated between the trolley problems involving a bystander at the switch and pushing a large person off a bridge, and why the bystander may flip the switch, but not push the person.
But Thompson wrote about the trolley problem again in an article published in 2008, and she changed her mind about whether the bystander is morally permitted to turn the trolley in the first place. The questions raised by the trolley problem are not yet settled.